The most annoying opening you're gonna ever face in chess is this color's checkmate. And today I'd love to share with you how you can defeat that in only two moves and get a completely winning position against most probable moves of your opponents. Such an early queen attack arises from white playing the first move pawn to e4 and as you respond to pawn to e5, there are different ways for white to go about this, but one of the trendy ways is actually to develop the light square bishop first and then after you play some moves such as knight to c6, they can then try to pull off this trick and either play their queen to h5, trying to checkmate it that way, or, which is more trendy, to put their queen to f3. And their hope is still the same. They hope that if you play any casual move, such as bishop c5, as you do in the Italian game, or let's say you decided to chase that queen by playing knight to d4, then they can literally checkmate in one move by queen takes f7, that's what they hope for. But also, the other hope of white is that if you play some normal looking move, such as knight f6, let's say, and you say, okay, I refuted that, they say, well, I mean, they just want to get away with that and continue playing normal chess, playing something like, you know, knight e2, then you, you play some move, you know, they play pawn d3, and then in the future, maybe bishop to g5 to pin your knight, and they still can continue their attack and play as if nothing happened, so they can get away with this early queen unsound attack and still maybe win the game later on. But that's what we don't want, because we want those tricksters to stop playing this weird opening, and let me show you the right way. Once white played queen to f3, creating that checkmate on threat, you're gonna respond with a paradoxical move, pawn to f5. And what I especially love about this is that it reminds me my favorite Russo gambit. Hope you watched that video, if not, you can check this out later. It's a very powerful gambit for black in general, but here we're using this against the scholar's checkmate, which is something really creative. Now, uh, at first, it seems like a completely bad move, because why wanted to capture this pawn anyway, and now you're giving it up. Looks like you've just been panicking and didn't know what to do, so decided to at least prevent the checkmate and played pawn to f5. Now, most of your opponents here would be tempted to capture the pawn by the queen, so they happily grab the pawn. Now they're pawn up, and they still threaten queen to f7 checkmate, so they're absolutely happy, and here comes a big upset. You play pawn to d5, and guess what? It is time for white to resign. In fact, that was a pretty clever trap and certainly unexpected by white. So here what you do is you open up this bishop to attack the queen, but also you simultaneously attack the bishop, and white can hold on to both of their pieces, so you're gonna capture at least one of them. Moreover, most of your opponents are so possessed by, by that checkmating idea that in this position the most common move of white is, you wouldn't believe, bishop takes d5. They still hope to deliver that scholar's checkmate, completely overlooking that now you can just win the queen in one move and the game is over. I find it very satisfying to finish the game that way against somebody who tried this chess bullying against you and you can turn that around in just two moves and now it's time for white to resign. Actually, there was no way for white to get out of this. Even if I take this move back, let me come back a couple moves. So let's say after pawn to d5, you know, even if white noticed the threat to their queen, they're defenseless because, you know, at least you're gonna grab the bishop. If they play queen to h5 check, that doesn't change anything, you just play pawn to g6, the queen has to move once again, and as they move it somewhere, you then happily grab the bishop, and you are just a piece up, you know, knight to d4 is coming and everything's cool, you're completely winning. Now, we can't always be that lucky, and maybe sometimes you face a more advanced level opponent, and then he can figure it out that queen takes f5 is a losing error, although it's the most played move by four, and what if your opponent captures here with a pawn? Well, in that case, there is actually a very simple way for you to gain the upper hand. So here, the key move is just to play knight to f6, so that secures you from any kind of queen h5 checks. So it's no longer available for white because you control that square. And secondly, you, you're getting ready to push pawn to d5. Now it's supported by the knight. So pawn to d5 is the move you're gonna go and chase this bishop away. You're also gonna play knight to d4 probably and attack the queen, attack this pawn on c2. You can push the pawn forward in the center of the board with pawn to e4. And you can see that you seize the initiative and now you start attacking. The most played move by white here is pawn to d3. Just trying to perhaps prevent you from playing pawn to e4, and then you play knight to d4, indeed, attacking the queen, attacking this pawn on c2, therefore it forces white's queen to go all the way back to d1, kind of acknowledging the error they made at the beginning of the game by, by bringing their queen out. Now you play pawn to d5, and you gain one more tempo, this time pushing the bishop away and forcing the bishop to go back. Now as the bishop goes back, bishop to b3, you can now recapture your pawn on f5, and you can see that you completely refuted white's idea. The queen had to move back and forth, and just uh, it's currently 
all the way back to its original square. The bishop had to go back. If you ever want to, you, you can just capture it. You completely dominate in the center of the board. Your hand in development, you're going to play something like bishop c5 castle and start your middle game attack. Well, for white, it's going to still take a lot longer to finish their development. So that's how you completely refuted that checkmating idea of white early in the game. Moreover, if white here plays knight to f3, which is, I think, the most played move here by white, you can then play bishop g4 and take advantage of this pin, which is going to create an even faster attack for you because there is no convenient white way for white to defend this knight. And anytime you want, you can capture there, disrupt white's pawns so that the king will no longer be safe. Even if it castles, it'll still be deadly exposed. And here, some of your pawns will play knight to d2, trying to prevent those bad things from happening. But if white goes knight to d2, that indeed prevents you from capturing there and doubling the pawns. But that actually overlooks the other thing. Now you can take advantage of this pin and play pawn to e4, and you're simply winning this knight, because thanks to the pin, the knight cannot, cannot move. Otherwise, white will lose their queen. And now, after an exchange, you, know, you just win the game. So again, the knight cannot move, or else you, know, you just take it. This pawn on e4 is defended, therefore white cannot capture there, that will lose the knight. So that is basically it. And if white tries to be fancy and play in the counter-attack and move pawn to h3, which is the most uh, popular move here by white actually, that leads to quite a funny checkmate. So we take here on r3 anyway, and after white recaptures the, your bishop, you now gobble up this pawn on g2, attacking this rook, and the rook has to stop you from pushing the pawn forward, Therefore, rook to g1 is forced, and now you play queen to e7, and you can see that this is nearly a checkmate. There is no way for the king to move. Now, your knight is controlling the square e2, therefore, I can't move their queen there either, so they have to play something like knight to e4 and just give up material, but then you capture it. You know, once again, there is no easy way for white to get out of this. And after bishop to e3, I mean, there are so many ways for black to win. You could play knight to f3 with the fork to the king and the rook, that is clearly winning. You can castle queenside in this game where analyzing black played that way. And now the threat is still the same. You're putting pressure here, but now your rook is getting involved to put pressure here. The main threat is knight to a3 on the next move. White is completely defenseless and white just resigned. That covers white's trying to play queen to f3 and to deliver the scholar's checkmate that way. You may be wondering, hey Igor, but how about the move queen to h5, which is also extremely common. Well, it targets this pawn on e5 as well as potentially prepares for that scholar's checkmate in idea once again with bishop c4. Well, in that case, I recorded recently another video about that, showing you how not just to defend against it, but how to be brutal and to completely refute this idea. You may wish to check this out later by clicking the link over there. And if you want to know my best training methods to achieve your chess goals quicker than ever, then you may attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there. Either way, wishing you all the best and I'll talk to you soon.